Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. So today what we're going to basically cover is how to make a proper randomizer. I'm going to be covering basically all the stuff that I know about using the random number block and some different tips about basically using it as well as fixing some issues and stuff like that and what you can do to make a basic a random thing that will generate something random with a few different conditions. I've basically set up a item so when we right click on a, a block it will basically output a message to the player which will tell us what the percentage of value is. We're going to right click on the block. It says uh, 0 0.49 or less than. That's one option. It did that same value again. Uh, we can keep right clicking. Now it's basically saying 0 0.5. We can click that again. Now it's back to 0 0.49. And now it's 0 0.75, 0 0.49, 75. 0.5 so you can see it's basically random with what basically gets outputted. Let's go into Amcrater and I'll show you the exact script that I used. So if we go over here to the procedure I'm using for the item, basically what I've done is I've used a MBT item tag for setting the value to random. I'll create this from scratch just so you guys can follow along and know how to set it up first thing that we need to do is depending on how you want to set it up there are three different ways you can create a random generated number so the first way is you can create a global variable and then run it from a global variable this will run across your world your map or uh, for the particular session I think there's also a couple player global variables as well, so it would be synchronized across all players. That's one way you can do it if you want to synchronize the, the, the random number for everything in that particular world or dimension or whatever. The other way is you can use local variables. Local variables are only good for one-time usage, so it won't be affected on update ticks. It will keep updating up each tick but it's not stored so we could use the local variable and lastly we can use any of the MBT number variables to basically do the same thing like we're doing right here. Now depending on how you want to set it up and how you're setting it up will vary depending on what you need but the system is the exact same. We need to set the variable to the random number and then we need to test for the conditions of that number and we do that by getting the variable and then testing for a value. Then whatever we want to do for your event is up to you. Let's start from scratch. I'm going to be building the one for MBT variable as this is the most complicated one to actually make. So let's start with basically grabbing a item MBT tag because we're working with an item. We're gonna to wanna to store the value to that particular item. So we need to go to item procedures and then we need to scroll down until we see set NBT number tag and then there's a text box here provided uh, item stack and then the value. So we want this block and then we're going to just plop it down right here for the time being. And you want to give this a, a unique name for the item. I'm just going to call it uh, pink diamond random number then what you want to do is delete the the number block right here and you're going to go to the math operator and grab the random event. Now the random event needs to be between the numbers of 0 and 1 when we're testing for it at least. So because the, the values only range from 0 and 1 there are ways to make it higher and lower but that's for a completely different tutorial we need to use point form in order to test for the conditions. So in order to test for the conditions, we need a if statement first. We're going to go to flow control and we're going to grab the third if statement with the two options. We can customize that as we want, but it's the easiest one to go for. What we need to do now is we need to go to logic operator and grab the dark blue operator. And right now it just says equals. I know it doesn't say equal to or greater than. That's fine. We can adjust that in just a second. Now what we need to do is now go back to the entity procedures and we need to scroll down until we find get NBT number tag and then the tag name and then of 
and then provided item stack. So we're gonna place that down right into the operator that we just added. We're gonna copy the MBT uh, tag name and we're gonna paste it in here. This is where this next part comes in. If you wanna change the operation of which the operator basically performs. As you can see, when I hover over the, the little box right here where the equal sign is, it says that we can basically change this as we want. There's also a little arrow usually indicated when there's something that could be changed. A little downwards arrow, if we click on it, a whole bunch of other operators will appear. So we want to select the equal to or greater than. And uh, when you're actually making multiple conditions, what you want to do is make sure it's on that, but starting at the highest number in your list. So the first thing that we need to do is go here to math, grab a number, and then we want to test for our highest number that we're going to be testing for. So this will be lower than one, obviously, but it'll be the highest number we start with. But what I started with in the example was 0 0.75, just because that's a pretty good number to start with. It's a quarter, uh, anything between 0 0.75 and one is 25% of that, the number, the random number can generate. There is some math behind this. So what we can do now is we can basically just copy or duplicate this by right clicking on it and then duplicating and then we can bring this down to our other condition. Now I'm going to set this to 0 0.5. Now that will be a, another 25% uh, chance between uh, 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 because these basically this runs first and then if that's not true then it's going to try checking for the next one in the line which uh, 0 0.5 will check from anything from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. Technically anything higher, but because 75 has already run, it will be pretty much void because it doesn't matter at that point because it's not true. So it'll only check for anything between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 even though it still checks for the rest of it. Now, if you want to customize your if statement and add on to it or change it or add more conditions or anything like that, we can click on the little gear icon right next to the if and a little box will appear. You can see that there is else if and else. Now we already, because we selected the second one, we can, we already came with, uh, or the, pardon me, the third operator uh, condition. So we already came with an else if statement. If you want to test for anything that basically is remaining, what you can do is just quickly put an else statement on and that will check for anything less than 0 0.5 on the thing. So 0 0.49, for example. And uh, that it would be the equivalent of doing an else if and then duplicating this and then testing if it's less than 0 0.5. So it's just an easier way if we were to do an else statement, it takes less uh, procedure blocks. So outside of that, that's all there is for that part. Now for some things that require to be run, uh, this block right here, this random block, sometimes has some issues with running twice. Uh, this is completely normal. This is how Minecraft basically operates. So what you can do to fix that, if it runs more than once or doesn't run, uh, there is some troubleshooting you can do. First thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to place down the uh, an if statement, go to logic, grab a not statement, which is the basically telling it if it's not on something, then we're going to test for that. And then what we're going to do is go to world data and down below lower to the bottom of the list, there is is provided world. Uh, remote and then client side. So this basically means is it running on the client side? And we're going to place that here. So now we are basically telling it is it not running on the client side? And what we can do is if it's running, uh, say, a block and we're doing a random procedure like this for a block variable, uh, we want to run it on the server side. So this is basically what it's doing is it, is it not on client side, which means the other side would be server side. If it's on the server side, then we want to run this procedure and uh, it will only run it once rather than trying to uh, run it multiple times and causing issues. 
So in these sections here, uh, all you need to do is basically fill out what you want to do, and that's all there is to it. Uh, you can use, again, global variables, local variables, and MBT tags. So any of those are, will work in the exact same manner. It's just slightly different. You don't need to set the, the, the name so much. You set the name with the actual variable. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.